President Biden was in an ice cream shop, and he was asked about Gaza, and he said, while eating ice cream, oh, there's gonna be a ceasefire. Because I have RFK Jr. in studio uh, later today, uh, we thought it would be a, a nice way of getting to the close here. I'll show you a clip about him talking about how our country is sick and we better figure out a way to address some of these real issues. President Biden was in an ice cream shop and he was asked about Gaza and he said, while eating ice cream, oh, there's gonna be a ceasefire by the weekend. No, not by the weekend, by right after the weekend. And it's not the first time that we've heard him take on serious foreign policy issues in that kind of light environment. We don't hear from him a lot in terms of laying out his thinking on some of these big foreign policy issues. What do you think about his candidacy at this point? I think he needs to come out of the White House and show Americans that he has the cognitive capacity to and the mental acuity to handle this job at probably the most challenging time now, at least in, in recent American history. We're facing issues that are existential. We're, we're involved in two wars. We have AI coming down, which is going to change everything, and there's enormous dangers in it. We need a—we uh, have an economic— crisis in this country where, you know, the middle class is disappearing. It's been torpedoed or 57 percent of Americans can't put their hands on a thousand dollars where an entire generation of kids cannot buy a home. This is a crisis. We need a president who is thinking about these things, who is articulating the solution for the American people. Do you not have confidence that he can he can serve? I think he needs to show Americans that, that he, you know, a lot of these decisions are, are, are the products of complex and nuanced thought, and those thoughts need to be articulated to the American people in a way that we all support him. And I do not think that that's happening now. Our children's lives are dependent on that 3 o'clock a.m. call, and we need to know that we have a president who can wake up in the middle of the night and who is on his feet and thinking about those things. And I, I don't, I'm not, I don't think, I think a lot of Americans have lost confidence in that. So you're saying you don't think he's actually in charge? You know what? I, on, I have a personal issue, which is my Secret Service protection. And I've known President Biden for 40 years, and he was a friend. Um, he, w with all of the issues about, you know, about him, he was somebody who, I thought at least, had a kind of fundamental decency. And the fact, I just don't believe that he would have personally made the decision to deny me for Secret Service protection. I think somebody else is making those decisions. Okay, so Joe Biden is sick, right? Something is not right with Joe Biden. And when we go through what we just talked about for the last 50 minutes or so between war and the climate agenda and the border and the drugs and the crime and the depression and the lower life expectancy, it's like we could use somebody at the top who is a little bit sharper, right? And that is the interesting spot that we have been left in right now. We're about to do a retread of the last election, which is which most people, even if you are like completely on board the Trump train and everything else. And, and as I keep saying, I am likely voting for Donald Trump. Uh, you could be completely on board that, but I think most honest people could still recognize like there's a problem here. There, there's a sort of meta problem around that we're just repeating that thing. Does anyone think that's right? And these people of this certain age and everything else.